Okay, it's showing that I'm live. So I'm not sure what is going on. I don't know, y'all. But anywho, I don't know, guys, what's going on. But it shows that I'm live on YouTube. So I wanted to come on here again and say hello. Welcome to my channel, brothers and sisters. Thank you all for coming. Um, and for those of you that won't make this live broadcast, I am much sure that you will catch the replay. Okay. And so I wanted to come on today and just say hello. I know it's been a long time, but also um, I wanted to share my thoughts on the wealth transfer and what I believe God wants us to know about it. Okay. Now, guys, I want to be transparent about the wealth transfer and let you know that God did not initially give me a specific word about the topic, but I recently asked him about it on behalf of my followers. And of course, I did have some curiosity about it, too, because I had been seeing it words given about it um, in the last year or so. Right. And so I believe that through the Lord's guidance and the insight that he's giving me, I, I received the answer from him concerning this wealth transfer. And I just want to share that with all of my subscribers and, you know, the people that have inquired of me about it, asking me, Shanika, I didn't hear you talk about the wealth transfer, you know, that sort of thing. But before I give you the word, you all know my stance. OK, don't come to me. Go to God. Why? Because I am just the messenger. OK. And it is your responsibility to show yourselves approved by seeking the Lord in your own time and waiting for God to respond to your request. Right. Um, and the word of God also tells us in first John chapter four, test the spirit behind all prophetic messages that you hear from someone. Doesn't matter who it is, whether it's me or somebody else. OK. And to add, I also have a video in the description box below that I believe will help to give you some tips on how to approach God concerning this word. So forgive me, guys. I'm just trying to um, understand why things are not working here. <laughs> For some reason, I can't see comments. I can't see anything. So I hope that they will show up. If not, we just going to go with the flow, right? We're going to go with the flow. So anyway, getting back to the wealth transfer, like I said earlier, I, I asked God about this wealth transfer um, that a lot of people were expecting to see. Um, I believe it was in the year of 2023 um, on behalf of my followers, like I said before. And so I believe that the Lord has given me an answer concerning that. And I want to just share with you what the Lord has shared with me. Okay. So brothers and sisters, the Lord said to me, okay, that first of all, the wealth transfer or a wealth transfer is something that happens from season to season, meaning it doesn't necessarily have a beginning or an ending point, but that it could happen at any moment in time. And somebody says, well, Shanika, how, how do you know that? Why do you say that? Because if we go to the book of Proverbs, chapter 13, verse 21, 20 through 22, I believe. And I'm just paraphrasing. The scripture says that a good man leaves an inheritance to his children and the wealth of the sinner is stored up for the righteous. Amen. And so with that being said, I think that we can perceive as a body from this particular scripture that because the wicked are plentiful in the earth, that at some point in time, there's going to be some kind of transferring of wealth, right? And the wealth will be given to the righteous as the scripture says. I hope that makes sense. How many of you can agree with that? So with that stated, this is the phrase that I heard in my spirit 
from the Holy Spirit. Okay. I heard the Holy Spirit say the wealth transfer will always be available, but it will not be available to everybody. My God, my God, my God. I got to say that again, people of God. I heard the spirit of the Lord say the wealth transfer that comes from the wicked will always be available, but it will not be available to everybody. That's what the Lord said. Okay. Brothers and sisters, let me say this. What's happening is that many people are up under the impression, okay, that this wealth transfer is for every person that hears the word concerning it, right? People are up under the impression that when somebody prophesies this word, that it is for them. But the truth is, it's not. The Lord needs for us to understand that his wealth, the wealth transfer is not for every person that hears the prophecy. It's not even for every person that chooses to receive the prophecy. But the wealth transfer is only for the righteous, as the word says. OK. And the Lord said, even for the righteous people of God, there are times and seasons for them, too. So even though the righteous are due the wealth transfer, they also have a time and a season that the Lord will appoint to release the transfer. Amen. And in addition to that, the Lord asked me to focus on what wealth really means. Like, what does wealth mean? And the reason for this, people of God, is because some people use the word wealth very loosely, right? The term wealth is seen in the world as being rich, right? <laughs> Having a whole lot of money, lots and lots of money, millions and millions of dollars, right? And I don't know about you, but I've even seen like these lists on the internet that tell you like who the top 10 or 50 or 30 uh, wealthiest people in the world are. And what they do is they categorize these people's incomes. And usually the range, right, is in the millions or in the billions of dollars. And so these lists are what the world perceives as being wealthy. These lists are what are perceived by the people as being the way someone that has a lot of money, someone being just got it all together. They rich, you know, all of that. Right. But the question then becomes brothers and sisters is that how does God really define wealth? Like what is the biblical definition of wealth? Okay. <laughs> So I just want to make myself clear here, people of God, that the Lord is not opposed to personal monetary wealth, as some people would like to say. You know, you got a lot of religious spirited individuals that love to say that Christians or believers are not supposed to have no money. OK, and I'm here to say that that could not be further from the truth. OK, living in poverty is not what God desires for his people. All right. But that's another topic <laughs> for another day. Okay. But if we read our Bibles, we would find that there are brothers in there, in the word of God that were pretty well off monetary wise, right? We, there was Job. Um, there was, there, there was Abraham. Uh, there was Joseph. And, and also there was Solomon, okay? These men of God, they made mistakes. They weren't perfect. They didn't get it all together. They didn't have it all together, but they were still pleasing at some point in time in their journey with God. They were still pleasing, right? 
in the sight of God. So having a lot of money is not a problem with God. Amen. But even though God does not have a problem with his children having money or even lots of money, the Lord does. He says, Shanika, I have great concern about how my people view wealth. God said he had great concern about how we see, how we perceive what wealth really is. God said not everybody is aware of his perspective, all right, on wealth. The Lord said that those that belong to me are being raised up to be faithful stewards of my wealth and to be good caretakers of my assets. God said my wealth not only comes for enjoyment, but it must be managed wisely and according to the guidelines that I outline in my word, right? That is God's guideline as far as how he's raising his children up. But the Lord is saying that many are not understanding that perspective. And then there's another perspective that the Lord gave me. And he said, well, tell them how I see wealth to be for my children. And the Lord reminded me of the biblical frame of reference for wealth. And really in its entirety, in a nutshell, right? In one phrase, people of God, God has to be the source of your wealth. Let me say that again. The biblical frame of reference for wealth is that God is the source of your wealth. Okay. That's the only way you're going to be able to keep it and be happy with it and enjoy it. Amen. And so I have scripture here. First Chronicles chapter 29, verse 12. Um, in this scripture, it says both riches and honor come of thee and thou reignest over all and in thine hand is power and might and in thine hand it is to make great and to give strength unto us all right so my interpretation of this verse people of God listen 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 Linda they say listen is that wealth is more than just money did you hear that? Wealth is more than just money. Wealth is a combination of money, honor, come on y'all, might, relationship, <laughs> salvation, strength, well-being, good health, being in your right mind, right? According to the word, this is how God sees wealth for us. Okay. Bear with me, people of God. I'm, I'm getting to the word. I'm getting to the word, but the Lord also shared this with me. And he said, Shanika, I want to point this out as well. He said, there are some people that are only professing the name of Jesus Christ to receive blessings and gifts. From him okay kind of like what the disciples did um, to Jesus I, I think it's in the book of John chapter 6 it may be in all the Gospels but John chapter 6 I believe when the disciples didn't want to believe right that Jesus was the Messiah and as a result they abandoned him right the people did not want to listen to the message that Jesus preached during his public ministry, which made required of them to be obedient, right? And to believe that Jesus was the bread, the Bible says, that God the Father sent from heaven to save humanity. The people didn't want to hear that. They didn't want to hear that they had to do this and do that in order to be saved. They didn't want to know that they had to surrender themselves to this man that they were looking at, okay? But on the other hand, 
these same people, these same disciples that rejected Jesus's message, they didn't have a problem with Jesus performing signs and miracles. Come on, y'all. Y'all know the story. The, the people didn't have a problem with receiving fish and bread from Jesus when he was providing that to them to eat during that time, right? But they didn't have a problem with receiving the blessings. They didn't have a problem. Basically, they didn't have a problem with receiving the blessings. So they rejected his message, but they didn't have a problem with receiving blessings from him. That is what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Okay. And so the Lord says, Shanika, that is the same thing that is happening today. That is the same thing that is happening as it relates to this wealth transfer. I need for you all to hear me, hear the Lord. God said that is the same mindset that the people are having today as it relates to these blessings and promises that I am releasing from heaven, right? They're only professing Jesus because they want something from him. They want a blessing from him. People only love Jesus when he's handing out money and cars and houses, right? Or whatever else that makes us happy. But then after that runs out, the people walk away like the disciples did Jesus. They walk away when it's time to be held accountable. They walk away when asked if they will follow Jesus. They walk away when it's time to be obedient. Okay. When it's time to live a sanctified and a holy life. Okay. They walk away when it's time to repent of sin. Right? My God, my God, <laughs> praise the Lord. So brothers and sisters, listen carefully, listen carefully, listen carefully. I'm just going to go ahead and say it. Okay. I'm just going to go right on ahead and say it. I'm going to speak the truth and shame the devil today. Okay. All right. Apart from the grace and mercy of God, listen, no one will receive this wealth transfer that is coming without being in the will of God without being fully surrendered to Jesus. Because again, as the Bible says in Proverbs 13, the wealth of the wicked is stored up for the righteous. So if you don't know God and, and, and you don't have a relationship with God, okay, and, and you straddling the fence and you lukewarm, you will not be able to enjoy the promise that we see in first Chronicles. God says, I got to repeat that. The Lord said the wealth transfer will not come to those who do not believe. It will not come to those that have walked away. It will not come to those who are half stepping it won't come to those who are lukewarm, okay? It won't come to those who are professing Jesus, but in their hearts, they're just waiting on blessings, okay? Period. It won't happen. And yes, I'll say this. There are people that are wicked and they're rich and they have a lot of money. Somebody said, well, Shinnika, there's people out here that got money all over the place. But yeah, wait a minute. If they wicked, remember, it's not God's wealth. 
It's not considered to be God's wealth. God is not the source of the wealth, right? And the truth is people that are rich, that don't know God, most of the time they are miserable individuals. Let's be real, okay? Um, their bank accounts may be overflowing with money, but their souls are dead. Godless people that are rich, will never experience enjoying their money. Why? Because as I just said, God is not the source of their money, okay? And, and nine times out of 10, somebody that's godless and don't know God, their money probably came from greed or some kind of immoral act. It could have been an inheritance, but it's not God, right? And then secondly, a godless person's love it's not for God, but it is for their money. It's for their riches. Okay. And so we know what the Bible says when, it, when, when, when we talk about people loving their money, idolizing their money more than they love God. I believe it's first Timothy. Okay. Six, I believe. And in, in, in that verse, it talks about for the love of money is a root of all kinds of evils, right? It is through this craving that some have wandered away from their faith and, and pierced themselves with pains, something to that effect, right? So just because someone has a lot of money, it doesn't mean that they are happy. In actuality, if they're loving their money, that is the root of evil that will plague their lives. And as a result of them being plagued with evil, they cannot enjoy the money. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. All right. So people of God to bring this word to a close. I believe that there is a wealth transfer that is coming. Okay. I believe that many of us are going to see a wealth transfer this year here, but it's only going to be for the righteous. OK, and as I said earlier, there will be times and seasons in which the righteous will receive their transfer. God is going to release that wealth at his appointed time. OK, I believe that many of God's children will receive an increase in wealth in 2023, but I also believe that it will be in future years too. Like 2023 is not the only year that we're gonna see a transferring of wealth to the righteous. 2023 is not gonna be your final year of receiving something, you know, wealth wise, or the Lord is trying to increase you or expand you, okay, in any way. Now, not all of God's children are at the same juncture of their journey with Jesus. That's why I believe that the harvest will bloom at different times. I believe that there are times and seasons when Jesus will release the wealth transfer, if that makes sense. OK. And I believe the Lord not only wants to bless us this year with money, but he also wants to bless us with a season of peace. I keep hearing peace in my spirit, peace of mind, joy you know, real happiness, not fake happiness, real joy, real peace, real happiness and rest, rest from all of the warfare. Okay. I don't know about you, but I've had a lot of warfare these last few months. And so I think that God wants to give us rest. I believe that God wants us to rest from all of the warfare that we have endured in the previous seasons of our lives. Hallelujah. Also, the Lord revealed to me that this wealth transfer is not going to look like millions and billions of dollars for everybody. Okay. Because we got to remember that again, God's wealth is not measured by dollars. It's not measured by money. But God said that the wealth transfer will give us all that we need. 
And I believe that the wealth transfer is designed to give his sons and daughters more than what they had before. Amen. And for some of you, this may look like a spike in your investments, right? Some of you may be invested into this new cryptocurrency thing they got going on. Okay. Stocks and bonds, you know, maybe some of you have real estate or other investments. Some of you, um, may be acquiring a higher paying job. Um, there may be a unique business idea that some of you have that you're going to launch and you're going to take off running because nobody's going to be doing it like you doing it. Right. Some of you may end up marrying someone that is wealthy, right? Some of you may receive unexpected, you know, monetary gifts. Um, I hear a silent investor. Somebody's going to be invested into by a silent. Somebody's watching somebody on here, a silent investor that wants to bless you tremendously. Okay. And in addition to that, God also wants to give you guys real joy. Some of y'all haven't experienced joy in years, real peace. All right. Long-term contentment, restoration and healing in your body or in your relationship. And the list goes on and on. Praise God. All of these things I mentioned can be packaged from God to you within your wealth transfer. Okay. Praise God. So that is it. People of God, that is the insight that I received from God concerning this wealth transfer. Thank you all for coming. Even though I don't see anybody on here. Um, I see no comments. <laughs> I don't know what's going on, but for those of you that catch this in the replay, just put your comments in the comment section and I'll try to respond to you that way. People of God. And meanwhile, I'll do some research and try to figure out what's going on with my life. Okay. Um, my prayer to the Lord is that you receive all that God has for you in Jesus name. I want to touch and agree before I get off of here that your latter days will be far better than your former in Jesus name. I want to touch and agree that this is the season people of God starting today that you will receive your wealth transfer from the Lord in Jesus name. I want to touch and agree that you will be in position to also be a recipient of all future wealth transfers from the Lord. And I want to pray that God blesses you tremendously in all of your ways in Jesus name. I pray that God will never leave you, never forsake you, and that he will lead and guide you for the rest of your days in Jesus mighty name. Remember people of God, we are here on purpose to glorify God in Jesus holy name. If it is the Lord's will, I'll be back here sometime soon to release another word from the Lord. Okay. I love you guys. And I want you to have a blessed, blessed day. Okay. <laughs> Bye.